And then the, the last site I wanted to show you is Gucci. Um, they are doing Ajax also and some other uh, JavaScript in their web pages. For instance, if I click on the right button here on their page, it is bringing me a bunch of new information from the drawn off screen from the right um, that continues to sort of show all of their, their formal wear that they have coming up. And then what also is neat is if you look at their – I want to make sure everybody can see this. So uh, if you notice on the left side here is their navigation menu. At the bottom there's a little navigation button, and we click that, you notice that the navigation switches. So it's bringing information back to give us a new navigation system. Now, uh, we had talked about usability, and this site might actually be a site that would hurt usability in my mind. It's a, I think it's a neat site and using JavaScript well and Ajax well, but um, teaching new people how to actually browse through a site that doesn't look normal, I mean normally you can't do something like this, could possibly be a hindrance to people checking out the Gucci line. Especially, uh, as I noticed, noted to you before, when we're trying to find navigation, to, to know, you know this navigation button way at the bottom is supposed to bring me back to the actual navigation, um, I'm not sure how well that's going to do. But anyway, you can, you can see a little bit of some examples of how rich Internet applications can be used or how Ajax can be used to, to make more of a, a desktop kind of feel as you're browsing through um, an application. All right, let me turn this off. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, I just want to bring my slides back up here. They kind of disappeared on me, so give me one moment here. As we're waiting, I can talk a little bit more here. Okay, so as we're, as we're thinking about RIAs, I just want to think more about uh, an example that, that might come up. What might be actually a desktop application that could come up for us um, that would be useful? Okay, sorry if I stepped out there for a moment. Um, I was having a bit of issue with my slides. Anyway, so what I wanted to do is, you know, we looked at some of these potential RIAs um, and some of these sites that we could go to in web applications, but what I want to think about is, is what would be a possibility of something that might be a good transition from a desktop to a web application. And I, I, I thought of like a, a web database. So let's say usually you have users that need to look through, maybe you have an employee that is entering a lot of information um, for car insurance, okay? And they need to enter usernames, what kind of insurance they have, how much they're spending, things like that. Um, typically on a web, on, the, on a web internet application, you would um, do a search and bring back a host of names. So if we had a name like Hammond, we might bring back 20 results on Hammond. But let's say we wanted to be able to actually look through the thousands or tens of thousands of records that we have. Wouldn't it be more useful if we could do something like Google Maps that we had a scroll bar and, and when people scrolled down, they would be able to look farther on and see that there are more records and feel like they're actually interacting directly with the database itself. That's where I'd like us to, to try to think about getting to with ARIA. Um, or also if they wanted to enter form information, it would be a lot more useful if they could type in a name, and when they tab to the next field, that name would actually be automatically sent off and saved into the database um, so that it would do a couple of things. One, instant error checking. If something was wrong with the name, it'd come back and say, hey, you need, your name is screwed up. Let's go to the, you know, work this out before you go on. Or 
um, if a larger chunk of information, a whole record was sent off to the database, you could start working on your next, one, next record, and if it came back as an error in the last one, that could maybe pop up right in front of you, and you work on that, uh, and then send it back away, and then the one you're working on currently, uh, you go right back to it, instead of all these page refreshes to keep going, and then, um, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever spent time in this filling out a form online, but sometimes I've filled out forms that are 20 boxes long, and I hit submit, and like my and my connection is lost, and I have to fill out fill out that whole stinking form again, and that's no fun. So it would be a lot better if we could do this continual checking back and forth of small bits of data between a client and a server. That would one, it would keep the server and the client synced together, and two, it's just going to help usability and flow for your workers. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some of the choices that we actually have. Um, if we're choosing to develop rich Internet applications. The first, of course, is AJAX. That's what we're going to be talking about in depth today. Um, another couple of choices that we have are Adobe Flash, Adobe Flex, slash Adobe Air, Microsoft Silverlight, Java FX, and Java Web Start. Each of these has some of its own strengths and weaknesses, um, and they all are going to handle rich Internet applications differently. The Adobe products, Flash and Flex, are going to both run on uh, the .swf, um, which is a plugin that goes into a browser. Uh, and Flash, I'm sure all of you have used Flash, brings in a lot of visual components. Flex, on the other hand, is similar to Flash. It's going to be using ActionScript and its own form of XML, uh, extensible markup language, to be able to write kind of like what an Ajax site looks like, except it's built right into that actual Adobe plugin. All right? And that's going to be similar with Silverlight. Microsoft Silverlight uses its own proprietary um, markup language called XAML, uh, the Extensible Application Markup Language. And um, so that's also going to need a, a browser plugin. And then JavaFX and Java Web Start. Um, JavaFX, that's going to be using JavaFX Script. It's a new kind of way of scripting for Java. And Java Web Start, the applications themselves don't actually run in the browser. They're kind of downloaded when you go to the site, and they run maybe concurrently with the browser would be a better way to say that. So there's no plugin needed for a Java Web Start. Uh, and kind of Air, Adobe Air is going to kind of run like that too, that you can develop these applications that can be sort of pseudo web applications or pseudo desktop applications. So that's what Adobe Air is. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about how AJAX compares to these in upcoming slides, but it's just good to know that these are some of the technologies being used to develop rich Internet applications. All right, so let's dive into what AJAX is all about. And again, we're not going to be talking about cleaning products today. <laughs> so AJAX, AJAX itself is not really a technology. People sometimes refer to it as this new technology that's come out, but Rather, it's, it's really a combination of technologies or concepts that have already been in place for a while, for the most part. Uh, when we talk about AJAX, it specifically stands for uh, Asynchronous, JavaScript, and XML. Um, asynchronous is a word that's just used, uh, it's kind of a way of talking about this interaction that happens between the client and the server. Um, so the, the asynchronous part, we'll see a slide on it coming up in a bit here, but it, it's just a way of being able to send information back and forth between the client versus synchronous, which is the way we've been doing programming for um, probably the last 10 years. Uh, so the other, JavaScript, as I said, is the scripting language holding AJAX together. It's kind of like the glue uh, that really makes AJAX work. And then XML, the extensible markup language, is a a way of formatting data that's transmitted between clients and servers. Now, the reason I write AJAX, case J-A-X, is because AJAX really isn't an acronym. Um, it never really was an acronym, but some people have sort of taken a liking to using it as an acronym. Because uh, uh, the asynchronous and the JavaScript are always going to be there for AJAX, but XML really doesn't need to, it doesn't need to be XML. Uh, 